Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well here I am in Max and I'm going to do some jitter stuff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a texture and then I'm going to feed that texture back into itself and then I'm going to apply some stuff to it to make it look quite stylish. Whether or not you think it looks stylish I cannot guarantee. I think it might look kind of stylish uh, regardless. Maybe you might just enjoy watching me do it. So um, what am I going to do? Well, first of all, I'm going to create a jit.gl.texture and I'm going to give it the dims, quite high resolution dims, 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to connect my render bang to that. And then I'm going to make a jit.gl.pix and I'm going to go into that with my texture and then I'm going to make a jit.gl.video plane at transform reset to and then I'm going to connect that to that and then we have that. That is the sign that the a texture exists but does not exist. Anyway, let's go into our jit.gl.pix here and zoom in a little bit. Right, so what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to start with the S norm coordinates of that texture and I'm going to calculate the length. And I think what I should get is a um, black circle in the center going to white on the way out. So all the way from, z from the center, we have uh, zero and then all the way out, like from the center to the outside, we have one, so it's black to white. Uh, maybe I can multiply this by something like 10 and then the range kind of increases. So probably that's going from zero to 10 now. So it actually becomes white much earlier, thus creating the illusion of a small black dot. Let's maybe do that a little bit more. Let's try 100. Yeah, okay. Now let's reverse that. Uh, by going this, whatever that is, reciprocal, I don't know. Okay, so now we have a little white dot in the middle of the center of a black square. Let's maybe just try 10. All right, I can adjust this later. Okay, that's fine. So I've generated a little white circle. Now I'm going to feed this back into itself. Um, I'm going to make another jit.gl.pix. And I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to go to, uh, where is it? Actually, I don't really need to find it exactly. Where would it be? Packages, Cycling74 content, Gen, Jitter, shaders. Oh yeah, shaders, there it is. Okay, so here are the built-in Jitter shaders, OpenGL shaders that you can get from. So I'll just, I'll go back. I did that a bit quick and I did all right. Okay, so let's go to file browser here. And then it's um, in, in Jitter slash shaders. Anyway, I know which one I want. So I'm just going to do a search here and I'm going to do a search for rotor. Okay, and the one I want is this one here, td.rotor.jxs. I'm going to drag that from the browser into the patch. Brilliant. Now, this is essentially the same as jit.rotor, um, but it works on OpenGL textures. So how can I query uh, what parameters there are? Well, let's find out. Let's do root param list. I think this is the way to do it. Connect that to the dump out and then I'll just make a message. And then when I send the message get param list, there it is. When I send the message get param list, it's going to dump out all of the available parameters. There we go. So I have zoom, offset, theta, anchor, bound mode, text. I don't know what text zero, text one means if anyone wants to tell me what that is. Um, right. So I want to access the zoom and the theta. So I'm going to make a pack zoom, ah, no, pack param zoom, zero for the X, zero for the Y. Connect that to the slab. So it's actually loaded that in a jit.gl.slab, which is a way that you can load shaders, open GL shaders. I'm going to connect a number box, a float number box to the final two inputs of this pack. So what we would get is we get this message, param zoom and then the two numbers. So it's made a list. Pack is really good for this. Okay, so I've got one there for zoom and then I want another one for pack theta. Zero, zero. And maybe we will reach ultimate theta. 
and all become Scientologists. Right. We won't. Um, so I'm going to put that uh, there. And then similarly, we get a message there like that. Right. So I'm going to reset those all back to zero and one. One basically means no zooming. Um, if we go into minus one or beneath one, then we'll be zooming out. And if we go above one, we'll be zooming in, I think. Anyway, let's watch that do its thing. So I'm going to feed that, come out of this jit.gl.pix into the slab and back in to the jit.gl.pix on the right-hand side. Right, it's starting to feed back already. So if I increase the zoom, okay, now it's kind of completely bled out, uh, which isn't what we want. So because we're essentially adding both of those back together, and if you add feedback back together, like ad infinitum, oh, it's too early in the morning to do Latin, um, constantly, forever and ever, <laughs> then you're just going to bleed it out. So I'm just going to multiply this by 0 0.75 um, when we add it, like you would with a delay, like an audio delay. If you overdrive the feedback too much, it's just going to crap everything out. So now we have um, a little bit of feedback that... Oh, look at that. That's good, isn't it? Um, I think I'm going to make one more param. We don't... I'll keep all this stuff here because it's quite useful, but we don't actually need it. Um... I'll make a pack param offset uh, zero, zero, whoops. And a couple of floats here, connect that to the slab. And now we can kind of move the feedback around like that. Yeah, okay. Lovely stuff. And with the theta, we can twist it round, okay. Maybe even, ah, made a mistake. It's not pack theta, it's pack param theta. Right. No. Ah, wrong inlet. <laughs> right. We're going to have to do that again. So I'll just backspace that. Okay. No. Oh, I've done too many numbers. What? What? Oh, I'm getting, getting way ahead of myself. Pack param theta. If I spelled that right. Theta. There we go. Right. Okay. So now we can rotate the image. And okay, one more thing I want to specify is the bound mode. So I'm going to say at uh, param, I'm going to hard code this in at param bound mode four, which I think wraps. Um, so it creates a mirror. So let's see if this has worked. Let's apply a little bit of zoom, a little bit of rotation. Yeah, lovely. And then a little bit of offset. Ooh, yeah, so we're getting kaleidoscope, kaleidoscopic stuff. Um, why don't we actually make a param in our feedback? So let's say param feedback. Uh, let's give it a default of 0 0.75. Let's say at min 0, at max 0 0.99. Okay, and then let's say multiply by feedback. Okay. Lovely stuff. Let's come out of here. Let's go prepend feedback, create a float. And what I might do, do I have a prototype for? No. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is create, set the range here, range of zero to 0 0.99, even though it's clipped in the um, uh, gen patch, just means that we can't dial that above. 0.9. All right, cool. So we've got some sort of feedback and now I'm going to kind of let that animate by itself. So I'm going to use a load of jit.times. Uh, let's make a jit.time.perlin for the X offset, let's say at scale. So this is going to need to be quite a big number. Let's say 50 um, at speed 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I think we could maybe go a bit higher with the scale. So let's say 100. Um, probably that is based around the actual dimensions. So if I actually just tried, this is X, isn't it? So it would be 1920. Let's try 1920. Okay, yeah, now that's really, okay, that's too much. Too much. Let's go for 500. Let's go for 
250. <laughs> You've got to find the sweet spots. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take a copy of that, plug that into the Y as well. Okay, now we're kind of moving that all around. Lovely stuff. Uh, let's do one for the theta. For the theta, we want a small number. Let's do jit.time.perlin at speed 0 0.1 at scale 0 0.1. You can't see that because it's behind the window. So this is just going to give us a little bit of rotation like that. Lovely. And then let's finally do one for the zoom. So I'll make a jit.time.perlin at scale. Again, small number, 0 0.1 at speed um, 0 0.1. Now that is going to give me a number going around zero. I don't want that. I want it to go around one. So I am just going to add one. Add one. Okay, that looks good. Let's connect that to that. Now we're kind of zooming in and out a little bit. Pull this out. Don't need that. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. All right, if we want to crank up the feedback, we can. We get this sort of stuff. Quick celebration guzzle of coffee. Um, maybe we could choose, let's see what, if we increase this. No, put that back like that. Okay, that looks fine. So we've got our feedback and it's kind of painting an abstract picture and whizzing around and doing its thing all by itself. So now I kind of want to stylize that and I'm going to use that with a Visi object. But really getting into this Visi object called, I think it's called Sketchy, Sketcher. And I'm pretty sure what this does is this does some edge detection. So I'm just going to hold shift and drop that in there. Woo, look at that. Kind of makes it look sort of more cartoony. And I'm going to invert that. Uh, yeah, that looks kind of fun. I think the offset is a little bit much. So I'm going to put that back down to 100 on the X and the Y. Okay, let's maybe decrease the scale of the zoom. Okay, yeah, that's kind of fun. All right, maybe let's increase the scale of the feet of the rotation. Ah, there we go. And let's maybe decrease the speed. Okay, lovely. So, yeah, we're kind of getting this blob in the middle. Um, so maybe what we can do, let's see what just the feedback looks like. Have a look at that. So with the feedback, we're kind of getting less of the blob in the middle. I think, or am I imagining that? Anyway, let's not come out of the output of this jit.geo.pix and it said out of the slab, which is creating... That looks better. Yeah, that's kind of what more what I want. So we're getting just the feedback process rather than the result of the feedback. Okay, this is nice. So, so let's do some more. Let's actually just take a copy of this jit.gl.pix here. And then let's do some feedback processing on this sketcher feed here. So um, let's come out of... Where would that go? Okay, let's put it in here after the sketcher. Connect that there. And then I'm going to get another Visi module called the separator, which is also really nice. This splits the red, green, and blue channels into separate planes, and then we can move them around. So I'm going to come out of that into the separator, and then out of the separator back into this. Now we're getting more feedback now. Let's increase the amount of feedback. Ooh, okay. And then um, let's separate the red planes. Yeah, look at that. Cool. Let's do it on a very small number, 0 0.01. And then let's do the same for the green. Yeah, so we can start to get... That's too much. 0 0.01. I kind of li like the just the red. You get this sort of nice blue and red thing. That's pretty tasty. Okay, um, it looks a little streaky, the feedback. So we can actually do something about that. We can apply some blur in the feedback loop. I'm going to do that with jit.gl.slab. Uh, and then the second option that comes up is this, uh, a Gauss 6X. 
And all we have to do is to drop that in there. And then now it's kind of made the feedback a little blurry. The second feedback. Tasty. So we've got separate feedbacks for the white part. Which actually, yeah. So with no feedback, we just get that. <laughs> with maximum feedback, we get this. And then we can feedback the RGB separation. Lovely stuff. Okay, that was pretty much it for my jitter patch. So what did we do? We generated our own little, um, our own little circle with a incredibly basic um, bit of gen programming. Fed that back into itself via some image rotation, and then took the output of that into this edge detection algorithm, and then fed that back into itself again via the separator, which splits the RGB planes um, into separate planes. And then that goes out to your video, your video screen. Looks pretty good. Let's have a look at it uh, full, full size. Yeah, cool. All right, there we go. That was that. Max Mondays here on Ned Rush. So I'm going to go and put this on my Patreon page now, where if you're interested in this stuff and you would like to download it and support me financially and get access to more content and support the channel, then you can do that. A link will be in the description. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.